Hello everybody and welcome to the first tutorial in a series. Uh, today we are going to look at installing PostgreSQL database server on Windows. Okay, uh, if uh, you'd like to open a browser please and direct yourself to www.postgresql.org. On this page you will find a download link which is just here so click that and then you will find a uh, list of mirrors to uh, download files from I always use mirrors I prefer that myself it seems to be faster especially when mirrors are close to your to your place okay now I'm looking for UK HTTP I'll be clicking on this FTP HTTP doesn't matter so much uh, what you want to be aware of is here on this uh, new screen you want to be uh, choosing binary and once you've got the new page you want the latest version why not let's treat ourselves and win32 okay uh, from here you want this file okay why am I saying you want this file well we don't want the no installer uh, binaries uh, there are uh, there is a binary here with which has got an installer why not make life easier for us so download this go ahead I've already downloaded mine once you have downloaded this file this zip file you must absolutely uh, extract everything into one directory if you try to run anything from within the zip file it will not work you must extract it entirely into one working directory whichever you want wherever you want it to be okay so I've already downloaded this file as I said earlier I've extracted everything so I'm going to show you uh, what to do next so for the ones who are still downloading you can pause the video now okay so let me close this Earlier I downloaded this file as I was saying and I extracted it into this PostgreSQL folder. So I'm going to open the folder if it wants to. There we go. In here you will find two MSI files. You should double click the smaller of the two. This one here at the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's click this. From there you're being offered uh, a choice of uh, languages, human languages. Choose the one that suits you best and click on start. Okay, so now you're getting the usual uh, warning. Uh, a lot of uh, applications nowadays don't like other applications to be running, but when you think about it, even if you don't have an actual application running on your machine that you can see with a window and so on, there are a lot of applications running. So this has always baffled me. I've never had any problems installing anything with other applications running. Right at the moment, I've got the recording software running. And I can assure you there will be no problems. Well, let's hope anyway. So it's up to you. You can close all applications if you want to. <clears throat> all right. Let's click on next now. The normal installation notes. Um, all... Uh, where the applications have uh, a lot of uh, installation nodes. You don't need to read them right now. There's quite a lot of them uh, because I'm showing you how, you how to do, how to install everything. All right, let's click next now. In here, you have installation options. I highly recommend you leave this as default for the time being. Okay, so let's click next. Here, you will be presented with a screen to configure the service. Basically what's going to happen is where every time Windows starts, the PostgreSQL database engine will start as a service which will allow you to connect to your database straight away. Now, you do not have to have PostgreSQL running as a service. It's up to you. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up the service so you don't have to start PostgreSQL manually every single time. So, first thing first, we will install as a service, so make sure this is ticked. Then we want to be giving the service a name. I think the default name is perfectly fine, no problem. We also want to give uh, an account name. Now, 
The default is Postgres. Um, my account domain is called Home PC. So I'm going to leave it as, as it is right now. Uh, it may not work. I know that from time to time Postgres has got a, a problem with the account name being called Postgres. So don't ask me why. This is here by default. But I've seen this happening a few times. So I'm going to put a password. So I suggest you do the same. Enter it twice. So it gets verified. I'm going to click next. Okay, uh, there's a data directory already contains a PostgreSQL database of this version. This database will automatically be used. There is no need to init DB, meaning initialize the DB. If you want a clean database, remove the existing data directory and try again. Where in the world is this data directory? Okay, let me just pause for a second. I'll be back to you straight away. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I'm going to click back here. I've actually found I had a previous installation installation sorry of uh, PostgreSQL. I removed it earlier, but I've forgotten to remove the uh, actual PostgreSQL folder from the program files folder. So I've done so. Hopefully, now I'm going to click next. Everything's going to be fine, and you will see exactly what you see on your screen. There we go. That's fine. Now, we want to initialize the database cluster. The port number the default port number for PostgreSQL is always 5432, very easy to remember. I highly suggest that you keep this. Um, for the moment, we're only going to accept uh, connections from the local host. There's no point in accepting connections from anywhere else. Uh, only tick this if you know what you're doing network-wise and you're well protected. Okay. The server encoding, I like to use UTF-8. So we will be using UTF-8. The super user will be called Postgres. I'm going to give it a password. I suggest you do the same. OK, now let's click Next. Postgres installation asks us then what kind of procedural language we want to enable. Now, we're only going to enable, we're only going to keep the default settings here, the PLPGSQL. Why? Well, I'm not going to show you any tickle. This is not a tutorial on tickle, for example. I'm only going to show you at one point how to build um, stored procedures. And you will need PGSQL to build uh, stored procedures. So we will keep this ticked. So that's it for the moment. So let's click Next. OK. One of the last screens you see are the different contribution modules. OK. I'm going to leave this as it is. We're doing a basic install. If at any moment in time during the future tutorials I want to teach you about a certain module, then we will go through uh, the process of installing this module. So let's leave this as it is right now and let's click Next. Okay, now PostgreSQL is now ready to be installed. Click Next to complete the installation. Let's go. There we go. We just have to wait a few minutes, so I'm going to pause until this gets installed. Okay, it looks like we're arriving towards the end of the installation. Actually, I don't know why I paused because uh, it's only taken 10, 15 seconds so far. And now it's telling me it's going to take a minute or two. Well, we'll see. There's only one database cluster to initialize. So it shouldn't take too long. So let's just be patient. As you probably can tell, I am not using uh, a script. I have no script in front of me to let me know what to tell you guys. I just do it, you know, uh, as is. Uh, so please bear with me. Uh, we all make mistakes when we speak sometimes. Uh, I try not to make too many, but uh, bear with me. Okay? All right, the installation is complete. We do not want to launch the uh, Stack Builder. There is no point of launching Stack Builder at this moment in time. So I will uh, probably tell you and make uh, another tutorial in the future to let you know what uh, Stack Builder does. So let's untick this and click finish. That's it. You know, that's about it. It's that's all it takes. Download Postgres, extract it into a folder, double click the executable, uh, make a few uh, guesses at what options we want to, to, to use or we will use in the future. And hey presto, we've got uh, PostgreSQL installed on the machine. So thank you very much for listening, guys. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.